In this video, I'll show you four simple steps on how you can create local volumetric fog effect in Unreal, which is dynamic fog that sits inside geometry and reacts to your scene in real time. My name is Peter and I'm a technical environment artist with experience as both an environment artist and a technical artist. Let's jump into setting up our scene. For this video, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.5 and the Dark Ruins Mega Scan sample from the Fab Marketplace. If you also want to use the project, I've added a link to the Dark Ruins project in the description. So once we've launched our scene, let's start by adding an exponential height fog. So go to your left in the Place Actors panel, drag in a exponential height fog, then go to Details, search for Volumetric, make sure to enable Volumetric Fog. And that's really all you need to get the global fog system going. What we still need is a few more things for the local fog system to kick in. And for that, our first step is to create a custom material. So go to your content browser and in the folder of your choice, right click, choose material, go for M volumetric fog and click enter. Once you've opened the material graph, go directly down to your left side, go to material domain, make sure that is set to volume. The blend mode should be additive. Next, create a vector and a constant. Connect the vector to your albedo. Make sure the color is pure white. And set the constant to one and connect it to the extinction input. And with that, we have created the initial steps for our material. So what we're going to, I'm just gonna quickly sort this and apply my changes. I'm gonna go back to my content browser, right click, go to create material instance, add a MI and remove the inst at the end. Next, go to your scene and in your place actors tab, find shapes, drag out a cube, place it wherever you want. And now I want you to scale it to any size that you feel would fit your level. You can add a bit of height. Once you're happy with the cube, make sure that your material instance in your content browser is selected and your cube is selected. In the details panel for your cube, there should be a slot for your material. Click on the small arrow, which will now assign that material instance we just created, assuming it's also selected. And with that, we have the start of our local fog. Let's go back to the material graph and we'll start with creating a world position node. And we need to convert the absolute world position into local space. So from the XYZ, start looking for the transform position node, which is in vector ops. And in the source, we want to go from local space to absolute world space to the destination of the local space. We also need the bounds of our volume. So let's create the object local bounds. And we're going to subtract from the transform position. So let's create a subtract the min values of the bounds. And we also need to normalize these values because they are now within the zero to one range at this stage. So create a divide. We're going to divide each value with the extents of our bounds. From the divide, we're going to add a distance node. You can find it under utility and we're going to compare the normalized values with a constant of 0.5. Now that we have our distance from the center values, let's make sure we are using the full range by multiplying the output from distance with two. We also want to flip the gradients. Let's add a one minus, because currently our gradient is the darkest at the center of our volume and the brightest at the edge. But with the one minus, we are flipping that. We also make sure we are within the zero to one range. So let's add a saturate node. With this, we should see something interesting if we connect this to the extinction node. And in our scene, we should now have a volume with fog that is its densest at the center and slowly becomes less dense towards the edge. Now that we have our base fog, it's time to add some details. So open your content browser, go to settings, make sure you have show engine content checked. Next, go to the left and select the engine content. Go to the search bar and search for volume nodes. Select the third one that's called volume noise shape 128. Drag that into your material graph. Once you have the texture in your graph, create a divide node, connect that to the UVs, connect the XYZ from the world position node to the A input, then create a constant, give it a high number, otherwise it might not show up in the scene, so we need a high number, I'm going with 2500, connect that to the B input of the divide node. The divide node allows us to control the size of the noise details, and you might have to experiment a bit depending on the size of your scene. I'm going to start out with two and a half thousand, see where that takes us. Next, we want to drag the red channel and create a power node. And for the exponent, I will add a, another const. I'm going to make it 10. 
This determines the sharpness of our details. The high value will give you a sharper detail, low value will soften the details. And we're going to take the output from the power node and add it to a saturate node to make sure we're in the one, 0 to 1 space. This result will then be combined with the other saturate output. So let's try this output first, which is the base fog. Multiply it with the new detail output. And finally, let's connect this to the extinction output. Back in our scene, we can now see that no the noise texture is now carving in some details into our base fog volume. You might need to adjust some values such as the tiling or the uh, power constant. And that depends all on your scene. I'm going to leave it as is and move on to the next step. So our next step is to push our details even further. So we're going to duplicate this new uh, details textures setup. And also make sure that the XYZ output is connected to our divide inputs. And for the variety in our details, let's adjust the tiling for the new two new sets. So I'm going to adjust the second one to 1800, third one to 1200. Multiply the outputs of the first and second texture samples together. Create another multiply so we can duplicate this one. Connect the output from this multiply with the third texture sample. Finally, grab this output, connect it to the multiplier we had earlier. This should now have the base fog multiplied by the combined textures and everything should be connected to the extinction input. And in order to wrap up this section, let's start by exposing a few parameters. I'm going to remove this const first. Then I'm going to call this parameter. So I'm going to right click to go to convert parameter. Name it fog color. Next, we want to expose the tiling values. I'm going to start with the top one and convert this. Let's call it large detail tiling. Let's copy that. Call the second one. Let's convert it first. I just copy paste that in. Remove the large. Call this medium. Enter. Go to the next one. Make sure you press convert. Copy and small detail tiling. Now let's do the same for the power values. Let's convert these all. Let's actually select all of them like this. I think we can do this. Let's go to the top one. Let's call this large power, medium power, finally, small power. Once the parameters are exposed, we can now go into our material instance and tweak them to fit our scene perfectly. And just like that, you now have a fully functional volumetric fog material that you can tweak as much as you want. But I want to take this to the next level. Let's add some animation. Back in our material graph, grab the X, Y output from the world position, create a panel node, hold down S and click somewhere in your graph. This will create a exposed const or exposed scalar parameter from the very beginning. And we're going to call this speed in X. We're going to give this a value of 50. We can do that again, but this time it's going to call it speed in Y. So let's create another one, speed in Y. Give it a value of 250. Next, we're going to combine these two. And you should also note that these values might change depending on your scene, similar to the tiling and the power values. But we're going to combine these by dragging out one of the outputs, create a append vector, and connect these two together. The append needs to be in the speed input. So our next step will be to grab the Z output from the world position, add that to another append vector. Let's move it to the B input. Connect the A put input with the panner. With this, we are preserving the vertical data, but not animating it. And the next and final step for this is to connect our append output to each divide A input. Once you've connected all the animated data to the divide nodes, click apply and go back to your scene. In your scene, you should now see your fog animated. If you don't, you might have to go to your material instance and adjust a few values. For example, you might have to lower the uh, power levels because if you have a high level, it might be that the darker values are carving too much into your uh, base fog. And with this, our material is now complete. Apart from one thing, and I'd like to show you a few tips for how to clean up your material. And we're going to start with dragging out the XYZ position and search for something called named reroute declaration node. Call it ab ABS world position. Connect it to the input of the transform position. You can add new color to keep track of it. I'm just going to pick a red. With the route created, let's go to tab and you can see a new category called name reroutes. Open it and you can find that reroute we just created. Reroute works kind of like a portal, allowing us to skip all of these spaghetti connectors. To create the abs VP, go down to the panner, drag out and create a component mask. 
make sure both red and green channels are selected. You can see them to my left. Replace the coordinates with this new output. Duplicate your rerouter. Create another component mask. Make sure the red and green is disabled and that the blue channel is enabled. Next, connect that to the B output of the last pan we made earlier. And with that, now you can see we no longer have these connectors going across our graph. We can take this even further. Let's move this further away. Create a new reroute. Call it anim UVs for animated UVs. We can connect this part by holding down control and dragging the output. You can connect the entire thing. Go back to tab, name reroutes, anim UVs, and replace all of these connectors. And with that, we've cleaned up our graph, and now you can see that we are no longer having to look at a spaghetti of connectors. So now that we cleaned up our graph, let's move on to something else, and that is optimization. Volumetric fog can be demanding on your system, especially for large scenes, so it's important to optimize for smooth gameplay. Volumetric fog works by rendering a 3D voxel grid across your scene, and you can control the resolution of this grid using a command. And the command we're looking for is r.volumetric fog dot grid pixel size. What we can do to see our current value is to add a question mark at the end. If I press enter and go to my log, I can now see that the current default value of our pixel grid is eight. A high value increases voxel size and improves performance, while a lower value will give more details about the cost of GPU time. Usually I would stick to the default value, but let's try and lower it to something like four. Now our grid pixel value is a low one, therefore we should have more details. If you want to see how much impact the fog has on your performance, you can use the command stat space GPU. So we can type that in stat space GPU and press enter. It will get a list of things in your scene that are impacting your performance. And currently my volume vector fog is at least top eight, but we've also decreased the value of our grid pixel size. So it should have a higher hit on the performance. So let's lower this back to its default value. I'm going to add the value of eight, press enter, and hopefully we'll see the fog going down in our list. So let's just, for the sake of it, try a higher value, let's, or an even lower value, let's go with two. So you can now see our volumetric fog is climbing and it's at the top place on our list. Let's summarize what we covered in this video. We started by adding a exponential height fog to our scene and enabling the volumetric fog feature. Then we created a custom fog material that gave us full control over the color and details of our fog. We then brought this fog to life by animating it using the panner node. Next, we clean up our material graph using the named rewrite node to make it easy to work with. And finally, we looked at performance tips like adjusting the voxel grid and monitoring the performance impact using the stat GPU command. Now you got a better understanding of how to create a atmosphere fog that can enhance the visuals and deepen the player immersion. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments how you are using volumetric fog. You can also catch me live with development streams here on YouTube and Twitch. I'm live Tuesday, Thursdays and Saturdays, 9 p.m. Central European Standard Time. I would love to see you there. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.